Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India uh, First and foremost is the sort of the social organizations or the institutions and second is the ideological factors which in a way has conditioned uh, the humans. Now, how does this idea of uh, dominating nature emerges uh, in human society? Perhaps the first and foremost is uh, which is developed from uh, the social structure. How then this uh, the social eventually structure around status group class formations and cultural phenomena emerges from the biological. Now, it is interesting to see that uh, from the works of uh, Marx or Marxism, uh, why is it that as a result of the industrial uh, in the industrial society or uh, in the capitalist society, why is that there is a emerging uh, classes that is the half and the half months. It is those half that is the capitalists who own the product, a handful of them in a way controlling the uh, product at the same time uh, those half notes are at the mercy of this uh, handful of capitalists who actually control the natural resources. Now, how that this, uh, this the pretty much innate social uh, structure leading to the emergence of this uh, development of the status group class formation and cultural phenomena which is pretty much biological in nature. Biological factors such as lineage, gender distribution and age differences were slowly institutionalized and they are uniquely social dimensions was initially quite egalitarian. If we talk about some of the tribal societies uh, or primitive societies, it is not that they do not have uh, a hierarchy or a status group, but during that point of time it, it was more or less based on the idea of geront gerontocracy. Gerontocracy is something where a status is uh, formed on the basis of uh, age seniority. So, those elders or maybe who are in a way uh, well versed with the customary laws and traditions of those societies are given certain kind of a status. And uh, say for example, in many of tribal societies they have their own chief which again is not authoritarian, but rather a custodian and who in a way look after the welfare of those communities. Now, therefore, this idea of communitarianism and egalitarianism has been very much part of those societies, when we talk about those simple societies. Now, how does this uh, sort of uh, gender distribution or age differences has eventually been institutionalized. Now, when we talk about gender distribution, uh, the kind of distribution between gender was not uh, much more uh, pretty much flexible and less rigid, because uh, in, in, in many of the agriculture practices there is no work which is you know being divided for the men and women, they have sort of joined the exercise and then uh, engage in those agriculture practices. Now, it is interesting to see that how these biological facts which are part of uh, the human society has been rather a late, at a later part being institutionalized, because uh, as society move on it, it, it slowly tends to accure sort of uh, an oppressive or hierarchical and then an ex exploited exploitative class form that is uh, so called social institutions were slowly 
reframe, rework, reconditioned at various periods and in various degrees, and then which eventually lead into develop into a hierarchical structure which are based on command and obedience. Now, who has those authority and uh, uh, the idea of uh, dominating power? Now, uh, to what extent uh, those people who are in a way uh, given so much of important or rather tends to occupy an important uh, category in their social structure. Now, perhaps hierarchy in its earliest forms was probably not marked by uh, so called uh, the harsh qualities, uh, rather it has occurred over history. Now, as I was talking about the idea of gerontocracies, which are based on the age difference, wherein the one who are elder are you know occupying uh, sort of a respectable positions, where where such form of this uh, kind of uh, hierarchy, which example uh, we I had talked about the tribal councils or elder chiefdom, etc. and etc. Now, this sort of hierarchy was uh, something which in a way is legitimized by the uh, communities, because uh, it is not that they demand certain kind of power and obedience over their subjects, but rather it is through their sort of uh, ability and then uh, as a result of their uh, sort of noble deeds and uh, be able to be a custodian of uh, those uh, communities that they were able to uh, you know earn such kind of uh, uh, authority or rather obedience from the communities. Now, how does this idea of uh, gender differences emerges? Now, this social domination again is uh, has origin from uh, how the human, uh, the male members has uh, <coughs> uh, dominating tendencies on the females. Now, uh, if you look at the simple technology when the, during the agriculture practices where, uh, uh, where a cattle drawn plow is being used, it, it slowly uh, tends to you know invade or uh, sort of attack the uh, domestic space of a female that is uh, who had used a simple digging stick and uh, the earlier economic predominance in the continent continuities of life is thereby diluted. Now, it, it, it is because uh, we can from the essentialist perspective if we talk about the biological factors, it is it is because of the structure and the strength and the sturdiness of uh, the male that they tends to slowly uh, has and uh, supersede the not only the space, but also the control and dominance on female. Male dominance in a way becomes extremely active and it ultimately you know produces a world that is managed only by the male elites who dominate not only women but also other men now this sort of hierarchy and idea of domination emerges from uh, sort of the family wherein uh, the gender differences happens to sort of emerges i'll detail about this uh, idea of gender differentiation and uh, male domination when we talk about uh, uh, when we lecture upon the eco feminism and then I am sure you will have much more clear picture and ideas. Now, why then this hierarchy emerges and uh, why is it that it, it is sort of so much uh, distinct and evident as time passed by. Perhaps we can give uh, uh, certain factors like example of 
uh, the increasing population, natural disaster and also certain technological changes that in a way privilege the mill activities uh, which, which normally uh, I mean the involved in the activities of hunting and caring for animals over the horticultural functions of female and the growth of civil society, the spread of warfare. So, in a way the development or this emergence of the science and technology is in a way seen by many families as something which is uh, against their interest because uh, for, for example, uh, if we talk about the technology, the big tractors and trawlers in a way uh, privilege and, and uh, the male members rather the female in terms of you know utilizing them. Therefore, the male members over a period of time has tends to occupy much more important uh, space uh, as, as many of the you know the modern technologies are uh, sort of favoring them. Therefore, they are in a better positions and this sort of hierarchy not just between uh, male and female, but also among other subjects that is the man over man and then from one cultural group to the other group and from one society to other society from one nation to the other nations, city states, so and so forth. Therefore, this hierarchy has emerges as society develop and nation develop and uh, this so, so is the uh, demarcations which uh, sort of develop as a result of those factors. How then this idea of dominating nature emerges? Now, uh, Bookchin has said that uh, nature in a broad sense uh, is a biotic uh, environment which humans uh, take the simple things and which, which they need for survival modes of sustenance and often which has no meaning of the preliterate peoples even when they celebrate the animistic rituals and view the world around them as an excess of life that is which is more or less based on mutual dependence and sort of uh, the interrelationship between the biotic and human was pretty much uh, harmonious uh, in the first form of uh, maybe perhaps the preliterate society. Now, how then this hierarchy emerges? With the rise of hierarchy, uh, human domination uh, tends to you know this ideology seems to be planted uh, for a belief that nature not only exists as a world apart, but that it is hierarchically organized and can be dominated. Now, in a way this civilizational modes of thinking or notion of uh, domination emerges sort of uh, the hierarchy between human and nature is developed. Now, for instance, in a very simple anthropological sense, if you set an example like, like for instance magic, which in a way uh, reveals this shift uh, and, and will, will sort of simplify uh, doubt in some way. Now, the early form of these magic practices tends to view nature as uh, you know a world apart and then and, and it, its world view tended to be you know guided by how the practitioner that is the one who practice magic essentially pleaded with the chief spirit that is some sort of spirituality uh, still guided uh, the human in the naturalistic surround, surrounding. Now, the one who practice this magic in, our, in its earliest form tends to plead to the chief spirit or the game to cox an animal or sort of a direction of an arrow or a spear when one has to go for sort of a hunt or hunting animals. 
Later, this magic becomes almost entirely instrumental. That is, the game is coursed by magical techniques to become the hunter's prey. Now, there's this a dramatic shift in even the practice of this ritual. How human tends to, you know, uh, make full use of the kind of practices one does to satisfy one's needs. The first one is sort of seeking a permission or praying to the spirit. But in the second part, in the later part, it, it, it is, tends to be guided by this uh, idea of instrumentalism. The game is sort of course by medical, magical tactics, techniques to become the hunter's prey. So, it, in a way it is being pushed and forced to satisfy their need that is so that they are able to accomplish their desire and mission in a way. Now, interestingly while the earliest form of magic which we had discussed may be regarded as the practices of a generally uh, non-hierarchical and egalitarian community and, and, and the later forms of uh, animistic belief betray a more or less hierarchical view of the natural world and of a latent human province of domination. Now, this idea of how uh, even the practices of magic or maybe animistic belief also change. Now, for instance, I go to the temple or church to pray, not, not just to get, uh, you know, uh, to thank or the sort of get a blessing, but if I visited church or the temple uh, with single mindedly that uh, to, you know, fulfill a certain kind of or achieve a certain kind of goal. So, that idea of uh, worshipping or thanksgiving in a way also is different, because we, we are guided by this idea of instrumental. Now, perhaps this idea of uh, dominating nature has also its primary source in the uh, domination of human by human and the structuring of the natural world into a hierarchical chain of uh, being uh, that is a static conception uh, incidentally that has no relationship to the evolution of life into a much more increasingly advanced form of subjectivity and flexibility. Now, uh, social ecology in a way you know uh, rejected or refuses uh, the fact that the harm this so called elite society inflicted on the natural world was much more than uh, compared to the harm inflicted on humanity or nor does it overlook the fact that the destiny of human life goes hand in hand with the destiny of the non-human world. Now, if it affects the human, uh, similarly it is going to affect the non-human world. Therefore, our action, every kind of uh, uh, action in a way will have uh, an equal reaction. The consequences is going to be equally bear by the human again. Now, we can only overcome this ideology of dominating nature by creating a society without hierarchical structures or economic classes. Now, since uh, this ideology is something uh, which has uh, drive uh, society. Therefore, this ideology of dominating nature has to be restructured and it has to create a society uh, uh, in absence of a hierarchy structure or economic classes. Now, as we had uh, talked about the idea of the survival of the fetus, which is again uh, borrowed from this Darwinism, uh, this particular uh, idea of this 
uh, one of the perhaps one of the factors of these environmental problems is again we are guided by this ideology of grow or die. But just as uh, we had discussed this hierarchy and this class structure tend to you know uh, accure a momentum in their own and uh, uh, permeates much of uh, society. So, too the market began to accure a life of its own and uh, extended its reach beyond the limited regions into the depths of uh, worst continents. It is, it is more or less influenced by this consumer system. Exchange is to be primarily uh, a means to provide the modest needs which in a way subvert the limits imposed upon guilds on moral religious restrictions. Now, uh, beginning from the late 18th and uh, early 19th centuries, this new industrial capitalist class with its factory system and commitment to limitless expansion began to sort of colonize the entire world and finally, most aspects of the personal life. Now, uh, unlike the feudal nobility, which had its cherished uh, lands and castles, the bourgeois that is the industrialist or the capitalist today had no home, but the marketplace and its bank walls. Now, it is uh, not limited to a single uh, space, but it is uh, it has no territorial limits and uh, therefore, it in a way has uh, produced a class or which has uh, you know turned more and more of the world into an ever expanding domain of factories. Now, this is something how uh, this idea of uh, class or status emerges and develop over a period of time. On the other hand, this uh, the industrial capitalists of uh, this modern world spawned a bitterly competitive marketplace that in a way plays a high premium on industrial expansion and also the commercial power it confer and function as the growth uh, where an end in itself. Now, that is perhaps if you do not expand and grow, you do not have a stake and a say. So, it uh, in a way uh, push them aside to perish or die. It is also crucially important in social ecology to recognize that industrial growth does not result from a change in a cultural outlook alone and least of all from the impact of scientific rationality on society. Rather, uh, apart from this uh, the cultural outlook and uh, the scientific rationality it stems from uh, the harshly objective factors, which are churned up by the expansion of the market itself, factors that are uh, strongly impervious to moral considerations and efforts at ethical persuasions. Now, therefore, the key to this law of life that is to survival, life to survival is expansion and greater profit to be invested in still further expansion. There indeed the notion of this progress once identified by our, our ancestor as fate in the evolution of greater human cooperation and care is now identified with economic growth. So, those idea of egalitarian community, community and feelings are being brushed aside and replaces by uh, the individual interest and uh, uh, which is guided again by the economic orientations and profit. Now, the point social ecology uh, which is strongly advocated by Murray Bookchin emphasizes uh, is that moral and spiritual change is meaningless or unnecessary, but that modern capitalism is structurally immoral and hence impervious to any moral appeals. Now, which in a way is a bit fitting reply to the deep ecology. Uh, what uh, uh, Bookchin talks about is not simply 
spiritual change is inadequate. The maxims like, for instance, uh, business is business explicitly tends to portray that ethical, religious, psychological and uh, emotional factors have absolutely no place in this impersonal world of production, profit and growth. That is the so called materialistic world. It is grossly therefore misleading to think that we can divest this brutal, brutal, brutally materialistic and uh, indeed uh, mechanistic world of its objective character that we can vaporize its hard facts rather than transforming it. Now, Bookchin claims that industrial growth is not the result of a change in a cultural outlook alone, nor is, is it due to the impact of scientific rationality, rather it stems from the principle of the uh, market itself that is the demand to grow or die or uh, survival of the fetus in the simplest term. A society based on grow or die as uh, its all pervasive imperative must necessarily uh, have a devastating political impact given the present context that is uh, generated by this market competition it would mean little or nothing if the present day population were reduced to a fraction of what it is today. Now, the ever expanding of uh, market system as we talk about the market expansion that has its roots in the one of uh, history's most fundamental social transformation that is the elaboration of hierarchy and class into a system of distribution based on exchange rather than complementarity and mutual aid. Now, therefore, this idea of cooperation and community and feelings are being replaced by this individualistic and materialistic notion of ideology. Now, therefore, it is important to have an ecological society uh, which is perhaps uh, not based on, but also which has an appeal not only for uh, 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 moral regeneration, but also and above all for a social reconstruction along ecological line. Because uh, social ecology believes that the human and the biotic non-human in a way uh, share the evolutionary flows. Therefore, the social reconstruction has to be uh, practices or inculcated along the ecological lines. Although always mindful of the need for a spiritual change, social ecology in a way seeks to redress the ecological ab abuses or uh, impacts or consequences it has sort of uh, cater the past few centuries that society has inflicted on the natural uh, or the natural world by going to the structural as well as the subjective sources of notions like the domination of nature. Therefore, it is important to not just uh, talk about the symptoms of the problems, but it is equally important to unart or find out the causes of those problems. And perhaps uh, one of the most important uh, causes of the problem is how this idea of domination of nature emerges. So, one has to begin with uh, in the starting point and then sort of a social reconstruction is needed. Therefore, social ecology challenges the entire system of this domination itself and uh, attempts to seek uh, by eliminating this uh, hierarchical and class edifice that has sort of imposed itself on humanity and defined the relationship between non-human and human nature. So, this redefinition or uh, re-examination of the human and non-human nature is important and one has to situate and relocate 
uh, the human positions in relationship to the non-human that is the biotic. Now, social ecology therefore uh, advances an ethics of uh, complementarity in which human should play a supportive role in perpetuating the integrity of the biosphere as potentially at least uh, sort of the most uh, conscious products of natural evolution. And uh, indeed, humans are seen to you know have a moral responsibility to function creatively in the unfolding of that evolution. And social ecology therefore, stresses the need for embodying its ethics of complementarity in a palpable social institution that would perhaps give an active meaning to its goal of wholeness that is the holistic uh, unity of uh, all the organs and the biotic system and of human involvement as conscious and natural agents in the interplay of species. So, therefore, social ecology strongly talks about the moral responsibility of maintaining a sort of or playing the role of a complementarity. Now, in conclusion, we can uh, sort of uh, sum up our discussion by saying that uh, in place of uh, the existing hierarchical and class system, uh, social ecology in a way proposes an egalitarian society which are based on mutual aid, caring and communitarian values. People in this new society would in a way be appreciative that the interests of the collective are inseparable from those of each individual. Therefore, first and foremost the hierarchy or this class uh, stratification or uh, differentiation which is pretty much inherent in human society has to be sort of socially reconstruct and uh, each and every individual should be given an important place and so is our relations uh, with the non-human world and property in a way would be shared and ideally belong to the community as a whole which should not be confined and controlled by only a handful of people. In this commune of communes that is property would not belong to private producers or to a nation state. Now, this transformation in a way is to be achieved through radical collective action, not by just one single individual, but a collective action and cooperative and social movement. The process of eliminating old uh, domination must begin not only in the factory, but also in the family, uh, not only uh, in the economy, but also in the psyche and not only in the material conditions of life, but also in the spiritual ones. This is something uh, Bookchin has talked about, uh, which I, which is an excerpt from the open letter to the ecological movement, ecology movement. Uh, now, therefore, in a way it tends to you know espouse a social revolution and uh, uh, Bookchin in a way is trying to espouse a socialist ideology and, and wherein every human or individual share you know or have uh, a stake or a say in every you know uh, minute details uh, when it comes to you know sharing the relationship or or in a way investing on natural resource. It, it should not be something which is dictated and guided by the elitist controlled, but rather the property the natural resources is not to be seen as something which is from the interest of those elite as uh, the idea of domination and accumulation of the material wealth, but as a property which is jointly or owned by the community. So, therefore, which I perhaps feel that this could be one way of you know uh, not just uh, caring and nurturing, but 
which also equally uh, supplement and fulfill the needs of uh, the humans at the same time in return uh, the humans would be equally caring the non-human world because their society is being conditioned or that indispensability would be filled. Bookchin therefore believes that these oppressive hierarchical and inequality are at the root of the problems which we are encountering and that only a true community can sort of solve the environmental crisis. So, I am sure uh, you have some bit of an idea of what social ecology talks about and the kind of challenges it raises and, and what perhaps could be the way out in solving the environmental problems which we are facing. And uh, it, it strongly talks about re the social reconstructions of trying to imbibe those feelings of communitarian and egalitarian ideas which perhaps have guided uh, many of the simple and uh, primitive societies. Now, uh, for further understanding on the social ecology, you can refer some of the readings and uh, which of course will be uploaded in the uh, site. Thank you.